Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and today we have another big War Within beta update. Once again, primarily focused on tuning, however, we have some pretty big news, uh, which is Augmentation Evoker. Plus, we have an update to crafted items as well that uh, will relate to a video I made last week, so I want to get an update on that in early at the start of this video as well. So we're going to sequence things, Augmentation, then crafted items and uh, item level and stuff, and then we'll go through the rest of this post. Starting off with Augmentation Evoker. So uh, here is that set of patch notes here. It's small in number, it's big in effect. Uh, Ebonmite increases primary stat by 5% was 6.5%. So this is a large nerf. This is like a 20% nerf uh, to Ebonmite for Augmentation Evoker. And Closest Clutchmates has been removed. This is a passive that increased the effectiveness of Ebonmite and I believe Breath of Eons in five player groups. Uh, that was designed to make augmentation better in five-player content than it otherwise would be because the thought process is, okay, in a raid, you're buffing four DPS people. In a key, you're buffing two DPS, a tank, and a healer. Uh, and so we need to buff them by more to make that equal, right? Uh, and it started out at like a 40% buff. That got nerfed to 20%, and now it's just being straight up taken out uh, of the augmentation kit. Uh, so this is... In, this is a nerf that hits them both in M+, and in a raid, and then this is a nerf that hits them just in M+. Uh, but it's worth noting that these are both large nerfs to Augmentation. So Augmentation has gotten a large nerf to Mythic+, Plus, uh, and a moderate nerf to raid performance in this beta build. Now, how will this affect things? Well, this definitely makes Augmentation like suck kind of bad if you're not using it well. Um, which is already sort of the case, even in the end of Dragonflight, you know, if you're not using Augmentation particularly well, uh, the nerfs that it had accumulated over since coming out has made it so that in a lot of groups, people aren't really excited or looking for Augmentation Evokers, uh, and that's going to be even more true, right? They're, they're getting like a, you know, a cumulative like 40% nerf or something to uh, how much primary stat value they're going to be providing to a five-player group, um, so they're contributing a lot less in those sort of less organized spaces where you're not planning out your cooldowns, you're not playing specs that synergize with augmentation and lining up their CDs with them. Um, it's going to be, I think, quite actively not sought after in most groups. Will it still be good for, like, Race to World First level guilds and 20-player content? My guess is probably yes, but it's definitely close, and... Uh, I'm not, I'm not very confident in that yet. I don't actually, I don't, I don't know the numbers. The state of the beta leading up to this point was that in a 20 player group, the augmentation evokers, the two augmentation evokers, if they were played well, uh, if they were planned around were your two most valuable players. Um, so my guess is that they're probably still upper middle of the pack or top of the pack in those settings. The problem is that those settings are very few and far between almost all people playing this game do not play augmentation or play with augmentation evokers that are playing at that level. Um, and so my suspicion here is that this is not a healthy, stable equilibrium for augmentation evoker is to be this nerfed. Um, now, none of the previous states of augmentation evoker were also healthy, stable equilibria, uh, but this one I don't think is either. I think what Blizzard should do this is now moving on, moving away from what the effects of this are going to be to what I think they should do. I really think they should reconsider augmentation buffing specific targeted players and move it to buffing your party uh, in both raid and in M+. This wouldn't change much about how they function in M+. In M+, we've still got some uh, you know issues with how much defensive value they're bringing to the group, uh, making it so that if you balance them so that they're providing competitive offensive throughput, they're just doing way more utility and defense than everybody else. Uh, that's a tough problem to solve. But at least for raid, if you made it so that you just buffed your own group, like you'd probably, you, you'd be able to probably buff back up stuff like this Evan Mike coefficient uh, and not make them super OP in really coordinated groups. Uh, but you'd be able to then slot them. You know, you could just play a, a raid and a, a regular raiding guild to be like, yeah, we're just going to put all of our two minute classes, our burstiest two minute classes in a group. We're going to throw an augmentation evoker in there and we're happy. Uh, and, oh, we've got a second augmentation evoker. All right, we'll put them in the other DPS group, right? And you're playing two augmentation evokers. That's the amount you're supposed to play anyways, any more than two augmentation evokers. And they're munching Ebon Might buffs like they're not able to buff the same targets uh, on live already. So it's already awkward if you're playing more than two. Uh, so I don't think that would be a big downside. It would remove some of the skill expression and gameplay of targeting your presciences on people and then you know making it so Evan Mike goes on the right people. But most augmentation, not all, but most augmentation evokers I know don't enjoy that gameplay anyways. They don't like uh, the 
you know, like the, if you ask them what's more fun, augmentation in RAID or augmentation in keys, a lot of the people I ask will say augmentation in keys because I'm just buffing everybody. I don't have to do this uh, annoying target prescience nonsense. So uh, that would be my suggestion for augmentation evoker. It looks like Blizzard is instead kind of going down the route of, all right, we're just going to nerf this until they stop until they stop using it. Uh, and my guess is that this is close to enough nerfs to make that happen, but not 100% sure. All right, the other discussion quickly is around gear. Um, so real quick TLDR is last week, uh, there was on the beta, we, I had this video come out uh, after Tettles and Now had a video and a tweet respectively about the myth track going up to six out of six instead of four, four out of four, and also crafted gear staying behind and being now uh, like 10 item levels lower than max upgraded myth track gear. That has been changed. Crafted gear is now once again uh, up to three below uh, the ultimate level. Whether that was intended all along or not, hard to be sure, uh, but possible that people talking about it kind of jogged that to the top of their, their to-do list to think about. Um, that probably means that much of the complaints that existed around like, oh, if I'm an M pluser, now I can't get competitive gear with Raiders or it'll take me a long time and a lot of vault RNG. Most of those complaints are now kind of gone again because now you can use your crests and your sparks to get effectively myth five out of six gear, which is obviously very close to myth, myth six out of six gear. Um, so that's good. That I, I would describe that situation as uh, that particular side of the problem fixed. The side of the problem of like alts have a really long road ahead of them when you're thinking of making them a few months into the patch. Maybe still an issue that I think they should they should look at uh, adjusting. And mains also having a longer gearing path. A lot of people commented in that video about how this can automatically nerf the raid, which is somewhat true. Six extra item levels does help a little bit. Um, but it's a pretty small thing. A much bigger thing this tier is going to be the fact that instead of just getting, you know, six item levels, we're, we're getting a huge stacking buff over the course of the first few months uh, that's going to auto-nerf the raid. But the extra gear will participate in that a little bit as well. Uh, okay, now to the part you've all been waiting for, where I read through all these patch notes and then I say, ah, I don't really know about that one. That's just tuning. I don't really know. All right, so up first we have Death Knight. Uh, we have Deathbringer changes here for Frost. Some big buffs to Deathbringer Frost. Uh, we also have some Rider changes, which is a Rider nerf. Uh, this one is for Frost and Unholy, uh, whereas these Deathbringer buffs are only to Frost, so not to Deathbringer Blood. And then we have a Sand Lane slight buff here as well to Frenzied Bloodthirst. So a little bit of re-moving re around the relative hero talent balance for, uh, for DK. Blood, we have some buffs here. All damage increased by 10%. Now, Blood DK already felt quite good defensively on beta. Uh, they, I think, survived and are even thriving after the tank durability nerfs uh, that came in a couple of weeks ago. Bone Storm is also being changed here to now only consume five Bone Shield charges and then last two seconds per Bone Shield charge spent was one second. Uh, so this is actually make, make it play a little bit nicer uh, and remove, if you're not talenting into the extra Bone Shield charges, this will remove a potential spot where you could get autoed with a Bone Shield down for a global. Um, I guess this also has some interactions with some of the other talents, like you're not going to pop 10 Shattering Bones anymore, just, just five. Uh, but yeah, this is probably not a huge deal, but probably nice quality of life if I had to guess. It's possible there's other interactions I'm not I'm not considering with this, though. Okay, uh, Frost. Glacial Advance and Frost Scythe now have their cooldown properly reduced by Haste. Frost Scythe's damage up, Obliterate's damage up, Breath of Cinder Ghost's damage up, up, and Shattered Frost damage slightly down, which is an AoE uh, damage effect. Unholy, Raise Abomination now costs one rune to summon, and an issue with Unholy Blight applying Virulent Plague to the, car the player's current target instead of enemies in proximity has been resolved as well, so not really changes there. DH, Aldrachi Reaver. So Aldrachi Reaver, Reaver's Mark is increasing the target's damage taken by 7% was 12%, so quite a big nerf to that side of the effect. Incisive Blade damage increase has been reduced to 10% was 15, but Furia of the Aldrachi's damage is being increased by 40%. And for Vengeance specifically, the activation threshold for Art of the Glaive is being reduced to 20 from 30 Soul Fragments, so that'll be happening uh, like 33% more often. Felsguard, Demon Surge damage being reduced by 6%. Focused Hatred now increases Demon Surge damage by 50% when it strikes a single target, was 35%, so actually buffs here on single target, nerfs an AoE. And Burning Blades now deals 60% of auto attack and Chaos Strike damage over 6 seconds, was 15%. So again, quite a large buff here, and focused on the single target side for Felsguard. Uh, slight nerfs to AoE damage, although honestly, you know, you're getting some prio in AoE out of this. Um, probably, you're probably still fine with it, and then definitely... 
good overall for single target for Velsgard. Aldrachi, I'm not sure if this is net buff or nerf. My guess is buff, but I don't actually know how much of the damage comes from these different parts of that hero talent tree. Uh, Havoc, I beam damage increased by 100%. A fire inside's chance to refund a charge of Amora increased to 30, was 25. And an issue with the final damage of Blade Dance double dipping into the Narabar 2 set bonus has been fixed as well. And finally, Vengeance, all ability damage increased by 15%. So tank damage going up uh, from the two tank specs we've seen so far. Tank damage looks like it's going up, which is good. Tank damage going up is, in my opinion, something that will help with the current beta build, uh, not just with tanks doing more damage and more damage being fun, but also with threat issues. Uh, so that is nice. Druid, uh, hero, hero talents, Druid of the Claw. Ruthless Aggression increases your attack speed by more. Killing Strikes increases your agility by more. Strike for the Heart increases crit strike and damage by more. And Tear Down the Mighty reduces the cooldown of Feral Frenzy and Pulverize by more. Feral Ravage Damage to Primary Target increased by more by 35%. Uh, Dreadful Wound, 17%. Empowered Shapeshifting, 6% was 3. Wild Power Surge increases damage of Mangle by 300 was 200. And Swipe by 75 was 50. And Bestial Strength increases Bite and Rampage, or and Frosty Damage uh, by 10 was 8, and Primal Wrath by 60 was 50. So a lot of buffs here to Drew the Claw Feral. Drew the Claw Guardian also getting buffs here. Uh, the same increase to Ravage as Feral. Dreadful Wound damage up by more than Feral. Empowered Shapeshifting, 15% was 10. Bestial Strength increases Maul and Rage damage by 20 was 10. And Wild Power Surge increases the damage of your next Bite or Rip by 225% was 100%. So hopefully this will make uh, doing some Cat Weaving as a Guardian Drew to the Claw actually be feel really worthwhile, uh, which... Is cool. That's something that the tree kind of lacked. Was, you know, you'd shape shift, and it didn't. It didn't really feel like you were getting much out of it. So, uh, yeah, big buffs to Drew the Claw for both specs. Uh, particularly the damage side. They're not buffing the defensive side of it for Feral, which I think is good because uh, we don't want this to be like a unkillable hero talent tree for Feral, and then they just you know play it instead of the other option because it's way better defensively. Illuna's Chosen, uh, fix an issue for balance, causing Moon Guardian to also increase damage of Starfire deals to nearby targets. And Guardian actually nerfing Lunar Insight increases Moonfire damage by 8% with 7%. So really trying to make sure that this isn't a... Because uh, I think this already got nerfed last week as well. Keeper of the Grove, Balance and Resto. Harmony of the Grove increases your healing by 5% for each active Grove Guardian was 6. And Scenarius's Might increases your haste by 12% was 10. So a small nerf to Harmony of the Grove and a small buff to Scenarius's Might. And then Balance, Dream Surge damage increased by 25%. Durability of Nature increases Treant Health by 100, was 50. Bounteous Bloom now causes your Treants to generate 10 Astral Power per 2, was 7. Uh, and Harmony of the Grove increases damage your spells deal by 8, was 6. So mostly buffs here uh, to Balance. Actually, it's all buffs for Balance, and then it's just a small nerf to the Harmony side for uh, Resto. Balance, all spell damage up by 6%. Force of Nature, melee damage increased by 60%. Wild Mushroom damage and Astral Power up. Umbral Inspiration damage up. Denizen of the Dream damage up. Astral Communion, Astral Power up. And the 2 set and 4 set are both being buffed. The 4 set by a lot. And the 2 set by a little here. So uh, definitely some big buffs here to balance. This was a spec as well. One of the specs that was looking at one of the smallest set bonus gains overall. Uh, so... Pro possibly back on the menu. I know that for my guild, we were looking in the previous beta builds, and I was thinking we we're probably going to play a bear druid, not because we wanted to play bear, but because we didn't want to play any other druid type, uh, which I think is in decent chance of not being true anymore. This seems like potentially enough to get a chicken back in the raid. I'm not sure, though. This is, uh, again, these are early impressions for me reading these notes. I'm not a, I'm not, I don't have the theory craft open on another, another monitor or anything right now. So uh, take that with a huge grain of salt when it comes to like comp predictions and stuff. Uh, and again, there are still more beta tuning builds ahead of us. So uh, do not, do not lock in any decisions yet. That's, uh, that would be foolish. Feral. Well, I mean, it, you can't, okay. People ask me this, this is going to be a little tangent. People ask me about like, oh, what's going to be good in War Within, blah, blah, blah. You know, what should I play? And the answer is like, there's a lot of, if you if you like the looks of certain hero talent trees, certain, you know, spec trees or whatever, anything like that, that's a great reason to play a spec. You can lock that in now. They're probably not going to change much. Um, if you want to play something to get a raid spot guaranteed or for Mythic Brog, you want to, you know, know what your guild should play, that is the kind of thing where it's like, yeah, we don't know yet. We, you gotta, you gotta wait and see. Uh, and then... I'll be happy to, you know, I'll probably make a comp predictions video going into the season again like I did in the past. Uh, you're, you're free to use 
my guesses of what's going to be good. They're certainly educated guesses. Where I, I spend a lot of time thinking about this, uh, but I'm also often wrong about that. So using your own judgment is, of course, something you can always do as well. Uh, and yeah, I mean, there is totally valid to be a flavor of the month re-roller or try and play the flavor of the month spec, but you got to look for the word month in flavor of the month. It's not yet September, so it's not the month that you do flavor of the month re-roll in yet. Feral. Melee auto attack damage up by 30. Uh, rip rake and thrash 5. Incarnation energy cost reduction of 25 was 20. Ashman's guidance effect now lasts 40 seconds was 30. And Savage Fury increases your haste by 10% and energy recovery rate by 25%. So also some moderate buffs here to, fe uh, to Feral. Getting some of this energy cost reduction uh, and haste and energy recovery rate I think is going to be nice because I think even in Incarn you were with the current version of Feral. Unless you had like a lot of haste, you were... Uh, still starving on energy and incarn, so this should go a long way to making that not true. I could be making that up though as well, so watch out. Guardian, melee auto attack and all bear ability damage increased by 20%. Moonfire damage reduced by 15%. Okay, so really trying to make sure that, that moon bear isn't, uh, and especially that if you do play moon bear, you're not supposed to just spam moonfire like Dorky was doing when he's been playing moon bear, so they really don't want that to be the right thing to do. And then Twin Moonfire increases Moonfire damage by 8% was 10%. So yeah, really trying to index out of this uh, Arcane Damage Moonfire Spam build being the best way to do damage on Bear while compensating 20% on auto attacks and all Bear ability damage. That is a large buff. That's large as well. Resto Convoke now casts an additional four spells for Resto Druids. Embrace the Dream Healing increased by 50%. Regenesis increases the healing of Rejuve by more. Power of the Arch Druid, 50% uh, more chance to, to proc. Uh, Tree of Life now increases healing done by less and increases the healing of Reju by left, so less, so a nerf to Tree of Life. Nourish healing buffed. Flourish duration buff. Rip damage nerfed, uh, but not in PvP. Rake damage nerfed and in PvP. Shred damage nerfed. Ferocious Bite damage nerfed, not in PvP. Sunfire damage nerfed. And fixed an issue that gave you an extra stack of Mastery Harmony on all targets as well. So I suspect that this is in practice going to be quite a large nerf compared to previous beta builds, especially if you had a decent amount of Mastery on your gear. Um, but overall, it looks like they're trying to not, like, nerf nerf Resto. You know, obviously we've got a nerf to Tree of Life here. We've got some damage nerfs to them. Uh, but some stuff's getting buffed as well. Evoker. Obviously, we already talked about the AUG stuff. It is worth noting there's a little bit other things here, too. Uh, we have Flame Shaper. Consume Flame will no longer consider an increased healing taken modifiers on the target you engulf when calculating its target healing amount. And Scale Commander. Harden Scales causes Obsidian Scales to reduce 10% additional damage, was 5%. Uh, so a buff to defensive side of Scale Commander. Hunter! An issue with ghillie suit not activating when uncovered by flare has been resolved. Hero talents. Dark Ranger. Dark Chain visual now only appears at the affected target. That's the wrong effect, I think. Uh, and is removed at the end of the effect. Black Arrow is now displayed as a square. Black Arrow damage increased by 100%. And Withering Fire damage increased by 100% as well. Okay, so pretty big buffs there to, uh, to Dark Ranger. Pack Leader! An issue with Den Recovery refreshing duration while below 50% health has been resolved. Dar Den Recovery uh, now adds the extra duration to targets below 50% health on cast. An issue with Beast of Opportunity not summoning a pet when no target is selected on Bestial Wrath cast has been resolved. Beast Mastery Vicious Hunt damage reduced by 15%. How the pack's crit damage has been reduced as well. Okay, so nerfing pack leader BM. Survival, on the other hand, Vicious Hunt damage increased by 50%. Howl crit damage bonus increased to 7 was 5. Scattered Praise butchery damage increase... Uh, increased to 40%, increase, increase to 40% was 25, and Scattered Praise damage buff is applied every cast was every other cast. Okay, so some pretty big buffs to Pack Leader Serve and nerfs to smaller nerfs, but nerfs nonetheless to Pack Leader BM. BM, we also have, it looks like, other nerfs coming in. I'm not surprised here this spec was doing big damn in last week's beta build. Uh, Laceration damage reduced to 5% was 15, Kill Command damage reduced by 20%, Huntmaster's Call, Hottie, and Fenrir damage reduced by 33%. Dire Beast, 10. Pet Melee and Stomp and Smack <laughs> reduced by 10. Barb Spot Shot damage uh, reduced by 25. And an issue with Territorial Instinct, summoning an extra pet when talented into Animal Companion has been fixed as well. So some nurse to BM, especially to Pack Leader BM. Again, this Zek was doing a lot of damage last week, so this is not uncalled for. Hopefully it's the correct size nerf. I don't know if it is. Serve! Okay, we have nerfs coming in to Flanking Strike. The Hunter damage nerfed by a little bit. The Pet damage nerfed by a lot. Um, flanking Strike and Harpoon now pull you to the edge of your target's hitbox rather than the center. That's great. Wildfire Bomb initial damage is being buffed to the primary target, uh, but its overall damage is being nerfed. So this is a single target buff. Mm. Actually, I think net this is going to be single target about the same. And an AoE nerf. 
Raptor Strike increased by 5%, uh, Monger's Bite 5%, Flanking Strike damage increased by 10%, Explosive Shot damage reduced by 5%. So AoE nerfs, single target slight buffs maybe here. And Fixed Issue preventing pa Flanking Strike's pet damage from scaling with Hunter's attack power. Uh, fixed Issue preventing Flanking Strike and Kill Command from scaling with Mastery as well. So these fixes resulted in Flanking Strike pet damage dealing six times as much damage as it did previously, which is why they then put in this nerf. Mage! Frostfire! Frostfire Fro uh, Frost is getting a buff to its Living Bond multiplier up to 175, was 100. Note that Fire already has this multiplier nerfed at 75%, I think. Spellslinger! Frost controlled, controlled Instinct's Cleave percent increased to 30, was 20. Volatile Magic Damage increased by 100%. Sun Fury! Arcane Phoenix AoE non-exceptional spell damage increased by 30%, and Arcane Surge damage increased again by 30%. Arcane, ooh, clear casting is now learned at level 11, or level 10 was level 11. That's good. If you're leveling an Arcane Mage, you're getting that speed run, you know. Uh, this, is, this is big news. Mastery Savant's Arcane Barrage damage bonus increased by 100%, and Arcane Blast increased by 50%, so they're buffing Arcane Mastery. But they're nerfing Blast, Barrage, and Familiar damage. Magi Spark now has a two-second grace period after the initial Arcane Missile's proc, where the caster will continue to echo Arcane Missile's damage. Fix an issue where Magi Spark damage echo windows for Arcane Missiles and Blast were shorter than Touch of the Magi's duration. Fix an issue preventing Energized Familiar from, from granting mana. Fix an issue that was allowing the last stack of Nether Precision to be double dipped by spell queuing. Fire! Lit Fuse chance to trigger reduced to 4%. Explosive Ingenuity chance to trigger reduced to 3%. Living Bomb damage decreased by 75%. Okay, wow, so they're basically reverting the buff they did last week where they were like, yeah, we're going to make Living Bomb procs less often but we're going to make their, the damage of it go up. And now it's like, actually, you know what? We're just going to make it proc less often. We're not making the damage go up. Uh, it's like, Scorch damage is going up, though, and Improved Scorch is also going up as well. So some slight single target uh, execute buffs in particular here. Uh, although I guess that the Living Bomb side of things might cancel that out even. Frost, Death's Chill, maximum stack count increased to 15, was 12, that looks like a buff, but Death Chill's spell damage bonus decreased to 1% was 2, so actually a sizable nerf, Death's Chill is going to ramp slower to a lower amount. Ray of Frost damage, on the other hand, has been increased by 20%, so uh, that is a silver lining. Monk, wow, this is more Monk patch notes than I've ever seen in my life, especially for this spec. I mean, I've seen it before. I've seen it when they started they started uh, doing mystery for stuff at the end of, of Dragonflight, but whew, wowee. Hero Talents, Conduit of the Celestials. Celestial Conduit healing reduced by 8%. Inner Compass now increases secondary stats by 2, was 3. And Temple Training increases the healing of Vivify and Enveloping Mists by 6%, was 10. Brewmaster, all abilities up by 15%. So again, just this seems like this week they're just sort of doing an across-the-board tank damage up thing. Mistweaver, Yulon's Whisper healing increased by 30%. Jade Bond decreases the cooldown of Chiji by 0.5 seconds, was 0.3, and increases the healing of Yulon's Soothing, soothing Breath by 500, was 300. Uh, so quite a big buff there to Jade Bond. Tier of Morning now increases the healing of Vivify by 10, was 15, so a nerf there. And the locations of Invigorating Mists and Healing Elixir have swapped. Windwalker, Touch the Tiger now increases the damage of Tiger Palm by 40%, was 25, uh, which... Anytime you see buffs to stuff like Tiger Palm in particular as well, that is going to interact nicely with the set bonus that they are setting up to have uh, this time around as well, where uh, a lot of that, I think, is Tiger Palm. Hardened Souls now increases the crit chance of Blackout Kick by 10, was 5. RJW damage increased by 30%. Communion with Wind now increases the damage of Strike the Windlord by 100, was 80. Memory of the Monastery now increases Tiger Palm's chance to activate Blackout Kick by 25, was 15. Zhuen's Bond now increases Zhuen's damage by 30, was 15. Brawler's Intensity now increases Blackout Kick's damage by 12, was 15. Okay, so this one's actually a nerf. Crane Vortex increases the damage of Spinning Crane Kick by 30, was 20. So most of these are buffs. That one's been the only big nerf so far. Uh, Meridian Strikes now reduces the cooldown of Touch of Death by 0.6, was 0.35 when Combo Strikes is activated. So almost double the CDR here. Darting Hurricane proc rate has been increased. Martial Mixture increases the, tiger, the damage of Tiger Palm by 8% per stack was 10%, but can stack up to 30 times was 12, so slightly less damage per stack, but way more stacks available. Uh, cheaper's activation effect now stack up to two times, and its duration has been increased to 30 seconds, was 20. Cheaper's damage is being nerfed, though. Chi Waves, Chi Waves damage is being buffed by 80% as well, wow. Rising Star increases Rising Sun Kick's damage by 15%, was, or was 10. Duration of Fury's Ren stacking buff has been increased to 30 seconds, was 20. Whirling Dragon Punch now has a slight grace period where it will remain usable after our Rising Sun Kick or Fist of Fury complete their cooldowns. Nice. 
This is always really frustrating when you're spamming it right as it comes off cooldown and then you can't. Uh, fix an issue that caused Chi to not drop below Combat Wisdom's threshold at the start of raid encounters. Fix an issue that caused Ferociousness to not grant its increased effect during Fury Age Run procs. And fix an issue that caused Rushing Jade Wind's duration to be longer than intended. So it seems like pretty, pretty big Windwalker buffs here. Pretty good time for the Windwalkers. Another one of those classes where, at least from my raid theory crafting side, I wasn't sure what the best source of a monk buff in raid was going to be. My guess is in the wake of these buffs, it'll probably be Windwalker. But uh, again... Big grain of salt, not sure. Paladin, hero, talents, Herald of the Sun, Ret. So just for Ret, uh, they're buffing the damage of Sun's Avatar and Eternal Flame effectiveness on self. Lightsmith, Holy, they are nerfing Blessed Assurance, the damage buff to your next Crusader Strike, uh, to 20 from 100. Templar, just for Ret, they are buffing Wrathful Descent. Uh, to deal 100% of damage to nearby enemies when Imperial Hammer critically strikes was 80, but Templar's Sacrosanct Crusade healing can no longer crit. Holy, all right, we got a lot of changes coming in for Holy Pally here. Righteous Judgment has a 50% chance to create a Consecration, was uh, 30. Blessing of the Dawn now increases the damage and healing of your Holy Power Spenders by 5 per stack, was 20, so a lot of a nerf uh, to Blessing of Dawn there. Fading Light and Seal of Order now increase Blessing of Dawn's effect by an additional 5%, was 10, big nerf there as well. Word of Glory healing increased by 15%. Light of Dawn healing increased by 15%. Okay, so just baseline buffing spenders, making them a lot less reliant on Blessing of Dawn. Uh, Hammer of Wrath damage increased by 50%. Cooldown increased by 15 seconds, was 12 seconds. Awakening now requires 15 stacks to activate and increase the damage judgment by 40, was 30. So a uh, little bit less common awakenings, but I guess you'll get more damage on judgment out of them. Tears Deliverance healing increased by 30% and now increases healing taken by 12, was 10. Crusader's Might now reduces the cooldown of Judgment and Holy Shock by 2 seconds, was 1.5. Sanctified Wrath now decreases the cooldown of Holy Shock by 50% for restoration, was 20%. Okay, so a buff there, quite a big buff there. Overflowing Light now converts 30% of Holy Shock's healing into an Absorb Shield, was 15%. Holy Infusion now increases the damage of Crusader Strike by 50%, was 25. Crusader Strike damage increased by 25. Okay, so baking in uh, some of this damage here just to when you press it without infusions as well. Moment of Compassion now increases the healing of Flash of Light by 50%, was 15, does not apply in PvP combat. Saved by the Light now activates when an ally drops below 50% health, was 30%, does not apply in PvP combat. So Saved by the Light's going to proc more often, but it is going to have slightly less life-saving potential. It, it's, a, it's a tough concept to think about. There's something like this, right? You want it to proc if it doesn't actually proc and cheat death, right? If it can proc and actually save you from death, you'd want it to only proc at zero, right? Uh, for life-saving value. But... Beyond that, right, like, you want this proccing enough to get the HPS value, right? But you also would rather have it only proc if it's going to save somebody's life, rather than having it proc at 50%, then they get topped, then they get overhealed, then they get hit down to 20%, it's on CD, then they get killed, right? Like, so, in some cases, I think thir I think 30% is generally a better number for these sorts of things to proc at than 50% for life-saving value, but 50% is definitely going to be better for HPS value, uh, which can be important as well, particularly if Blizzard does a good job and makes encounters less, like, instantly lethal and more rotting damage, which is something they are trying to do as we speak. Blessing of Summer now transfers 12% of healing into damage, was 20%, and transfers 12% uh, of damage into healing, was 10%. Shield of the Righteous damage increased by 25%. Power of the Silver Hand now increases the healing of your next Holy Shock by 20% of all damage and effective healing done was 10. Power of the Silver Hand has moved into the final gate. Empyrean Hammer and Inflorescence are no longer a choice note, and the locations of right Righteous Judgment and Liberation have swapped. Okay, so some buffs, some nerfs here to Holy. Uh, I am not a Holy Paladin scientist. One thing that strikes me is they're doing a couple of these cases of making effects stronger baseline and then reducing the value of things that empower them, uh, which will probably be good for healers generally. It's, that's usually good, uh, especially if it's neutral when you have the buff, then it's just straight up a buff, right? Yeah. Prot, all damage up by 15%. Prot needs more than, than offensive help. They do need some defensive help, I believe, in the current uh, version of beta still as well. Ret, four piece, is going to be nerfed here a little bit. Wake of Ash increase your damage done by 8% for 8 seconds, was 10%. Blessed Champion now deals 25% reduced damage to secondary targets, uh, was 50% reduced damage, so slight buff there to AoE. Final Verdict nerf, Templar's Verdict nerf, Justicar's Vengeance damage nerfed, Hammer of Wrath nerfed, Blade of Justice nerfed, Blade of Vengeance buffed, Expurgation nerfed, Divine Storm buffed, Templar Strike nerfed, Templar Slash nerfed, Crusading Strikes nerfed, Crusader Strike nerfed, Word of Glory buffed, 
and an issue causing radiant glories and not function with fast back-to-back -back procs has been resolved as well. So mostly nerfs here to Rhett. Slight AoE and compensation buffs here in the form of uh, Blessed Champion being buffed, Blade of Vengeance being buffed, and Divine Storm in particular being buffed is definitely uh, quite a big note here, and this is also one of the biggest percents here, uh, but quite a bit of single target nerfs. Priest. Healing done from Void Shift to the Priest's ally is now capped at twice the Priest's health. This is going to... Uh, Mythic Fire Axe saw some very good use of Void Shift from a Priest onto the trees, uh, and that was huge value. Uh, this is going to prevent st st stuff like that from really being possible uh, in the future. Capping it at twice the Priest's health means it'll probably not change much if you're using this on another player, like unless they're, you know, a, a DK in Vamp Blood or a, a DH in Meta, a bear. You know, you probably can't heal them more than twice your health anyway. From Darkness Comes Light now increases the healing of Flash Shield by 3%, was 1, and stacks up to 20 times with 50. So this is going to stack much more quickly uh, to actually still a higher amount, right? 3 times 20 is higher than 1 times 50. Uh, but it is, yeah, so this is, this is, just, this is just nice. This is very nice. Cauterizing Shadows healing increased by 60%, resolved some issues, uh, updated some visuals, fixed some issues, and gave some talents 1 point. All right, so some, uh, some nice talent points as well. Hero Talents, Archon, Just for Shadow, Empowered Surges increases Mind Spike uh, Insanity and Mind Flay Insanity. That colon is in the wrong place. By 60% was 25%, uh, and increases are now reduced by 50% in PvP combat. So they're buffing it, but not for, in PvP, they're uh, actually still buffing it, but only slightly. Perfected Form now increases the damage during Void Form by 20%, was 15%, and damage during Dark Ascension by 12% was 10% as well. Oracle, fix some issues. Resolved some more issues, and presentative measures for Disc now increases Penance, Smite, and Holy Nova damage by 40, was 25%. For Holy, it's by 25, was 15. And then finally, Void Weaver, they are nerfing Void Blast just for Shadow. So buffs to Archon Shadow, nerfs to Void Weaver Shadow, and buffs to Oracle, Disc, and Holy. Disc, all damage increased by 5%. Note that for Discipline, this is a healing buff as well, right? Do the way the spec works. Holy Nova healing increased by 23%. Shield absorption increased by 30%. Radiance cooldown reduced to 18 was 20. Bright Pupil now reduces the cooldown of Radiance by 3 was 5. Okay, so uh, this there's, again, some baking in of cooldown reduction to Radiance and moving it out of Pupil. Uh, Abyssal Reverie now increases Atonement healing from Shadow Spells by less as well, so nerf there. Uh, fixed an issue, fixed some issues, and gave some points as well. Uh, Contrition and Heaven's Wrath are now one-pointers as well. Holy, all damage increased by 10%, Prayer of Healing, Healing increased by 30%, Circle of Healing, 30%, Healing Chorus, 3% was 5. Uh, so again, some nerfs there. Buffs to Baseline, nerfs to Proc. This is a consistent theme in the notes that we're seeing today for many of these healing specs. Lightweaver now increases Heal Healing by 25%, was 15%. Okay, so not there, that's a reverse of the trend. Uh, fix an issue, causing the values of Gales of Song talent to be incorrect, and Trail of Light is now 1 point talent. So it looks like a lot of, lot of priests... Both class trees and spec trees are getting some extra points, but not Shadow. Shadow, all damage up by 3%. Dark Ascension being nerfed to 20 from 25, though. Mind Flay Insanity now generates the same amount of damage over 1.5 seconds was 2. Mind Spike Insanity generates more insanity. Mind Melt now stacks up to 3 times was 2. Increases the crit of Mind Blast by 30 was 20. Mind Flay and Mind Seer from Idol of Cthulhu now deal damage 10 times over the duration was 15. Uh, the damage has been increased by 50%, so this cancels out. Fixed issue causing Psychic Link to not always hit when near the max range of its effect. Fixed an issue causing the targeted version of Shadow Crash to not follow a moving target. Ooh, that's really nice. All right. Up next is Rogue. Fate Bound. Heads, additional stacks now increased damage by 2% per stack was 1. Tails damage is being buffed. Lucky Coin damage being buffed. Delivered Doom increases Tails damage by 30% uh, was 21 when striking a single target. Fate Intertwined now duplicates 30% of Envenom damage to two nearby enemies was 20. Trickster Unseen Blade damage increased by 78%. Assassination All Ability damage up by 10. Atta auto Attack damage 10. Crimson Tempest 8, in addition, I guess, to being part of the All Ability buff. And Venomous Wounds Energy Restored increased to 8 was 7. Pretty big assassination buffs here. Outlaw All Ability damage 10%, auto attack 10%, killing spree 8%, combat potency now increases energy regen by 30%, was 25. Ace up your sleeve generates 5 combo points when triggered, was 4, not in PvP though. Uh, so big buffs to outlaw as well as assassination there. Ace getting an extra combo point is really nice as well because you often would generate to like, you know, 5 or 6 when your cap is 6 or 7 and you're just like, eh, icky. But yeah, that'll, so this will help a lot there. 
And then Sub is actually getting a nerf here, Secret Technique, damage reduced by 6%. So uh, previously, yeah, in the previous beta build, I would describe Sub as something that the rogues I knew thought they were going to play, but weren't excited about. Possibly these buffs are enough to make Assassination and Outlaw potentially compelling as well, which would be cool. Shaman removed a couple unnecessary sounds and animations from Stone Bulwark Totem. An issue causing Sky Fury buff to drop off after transferring zones and disconnecting has been resolved. Earth LA Summon no longer resets the swing timer. Wow, that's a that's a that's a that's a note that if you if you gave me this note and you're like, is this a, a change from classic or retail? I'd have been classic. But nope, it's a retail patch note. Fix an issue causing totemic projection to fail on transports. Fix an issue with all shaman starter builds having incorrect data. Hero talents, Farseer. Natural harmony now reduces the cooldown of nature's guardian by 20, uh, 15, was 10. Now increases the maximum health restore of nature's guardian by 10, was 5. Fix an issue causing downpour to not cause ancestors to use chain heal, nice. Elemental, 20% increase on Farseer's elemental blast damage. Resto Hydro Bubble Absorption increased by 200%. Ooh, that's really nice. I think that's the absorb you get when they go away, uh, which then sort of falls off over time. But yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of value. Stormbringer. Arc Discharge Damage Bonus decreased to 40%, was 75. Nature's Fury now properly modifies the crit chance of Tempest. Awakening Storms. Is it Nature's Fury? Oh yeah, that's not Elemental Fury, which is the crit damage thing. Awakening Storms is now properly modified by Stormcaller and Nature's Fury. Ellie. Maelstrom spending requirement to activate Tempest decreased to 300 was 400, so way more Tempests. Uh, 20, I guess 33% more Tempests, or 25%, depending on how you want to count it. Enhancement, Tempest damage reduced by 21%. Ascendance's initial damage is now properly modified by Stormcaller. Tempest Strikes is now properly modified by Stormcaller and Nature's Fury. Thorm's Invocation now properly limits Tempest damage to be capped at a maximum of 5 Maelstrom stacks worth, rather than potentially up to 10 when using Wind Strike. Totemic, Enhancement. Searing Volley, down. Searing Bolt, down, both by 50%. Surging Bolt and Searing Bolt are now properly modified by stuff. Same with Searing Volley and Tremor. So I don't know if this is net buff or nerf uh, to add these modifiers, but then nerf base damage. I don't know. Resto. Earth Surge down increases healing taken by 15, was 10. Downpour healing decreased by 20% and mana cost reduced by 20%. Fixed an issue causing chain heals from totemic rebound to, to reset the stored healing value of cloudburst. Fixed an issue causing reactivity to not increase how cloudburst healing stored. Fixed an issue causing surging totem to stop maintaining healing rain when totemic projection is used on a transport. <laughs> That's like a zeppelin or something or some kind of moving thing. Interesting. Ellie, we got a lot of changes here. Lightning bolt damage down by 3%. Lava burst damage down by 25%. Ellie blast damage down by 25%. Earthquake down by 15. Flame shock down by 15. Thunderstrike Ward up by 150, or up, yeah, by 150, wow. Spinner Elements down to 10% was 20. Earth Shock damage increased by 25%. Okay, so really trying to buff Earth Shock relative to Elemental Blast. Power of the Maelstrom has a 60% chance to trigger, was 25. Liquid Magma Totem now has a 30 second CD, was 1 minute. Ice Fury damage up by 85%, wow. Earth and Rage damage increased by 60%. Additional Lava Burst from Prim Wave now deal 50% of normal damage, was 80%, and fixed a bunch of issues. My guess here is that this is net nerf to Ellie. Ellie was doing quite a bit of damage in the previous build. My guess here is Lava Burst 25, you know, Earthquake 15, Ellie Blast 25 is mostly nerfs, although there certainly is some silver linings in these notes. Enhance, uh, the Splinter's Elements thing, they're just making that the same uh, as with, with Ellie here. Resto, all healing reduced by 5%, not applied to PvP combat. Spratting Spirits, healing reduced by 35%. Ancestral Awakening heals for 25 or 50% of the amount healed, was 15 or 30 and then fix some issues. Warlock. Fix an issue where Lifeblood was giving higher leech, leech higher than the intended amount. Diabolist. Felseeker damage increased by 360%. Chaos Salvo damage increased by 420%. Wicked Cleave damage increased by 830%. Ruination damage 70, Infernal Bolt damage 70. And just for Destro, the di duration of Diabolic Ritual is now 14, was 20. Uh, these are some big numbers, but we can assume off the size of these numbers, they were probably pretty low base damage, uh, just being buffed to be noticeable and relevant on these effects. Hellcaller, wither damage up by 15%, and AF in particular, wither damage up by another 35. Fixed an issue where wither was benefiting from Destro effects of Sokrathar's Guile and Mark of Xavius, uh, so this might counteract here. And then Destro, black and soul damage increased by 45%. Soul Harvester, Soul Anathema damage increased by 35%. Demonic Soul damage increased by 35%. Wicked Reaping damage increased by 50%. And then fix some issues. Aff, UA damage up by 30 or 45%. Dark Lord damage up by 55%. Wow, that's those seem like large numbers. Uh, and then fix some issue. 
Demo, Wild Imp damage increased by 15%. Demon Bolt damage increased by 55%. Demonic Core now has a 50% chance to grant Demonic Core when your summoned Dreadstalkers fade away was 35%. Now, are we sure about this, Blizzard? I don't know. I, w I was already feeling way too much procs, and I was, I, you know, if I had to move 10 yards, I could do that once per minute on Demo. I think that was already enough, so I'm not sure we needed to to get this many demonic cores. I think that, you know, demo, demo lock players, they really like standing still and turreting and casting their spells. So uh, I think if anything, this chance could go back down again. You know, let's take it down to 20% or something. Uh, that could be fun. Destro, buffs here to Chaos Bolt damage, Shadow Burn damage, Conflagrate damage, Incinerate damage. Ritual Bruin, on the other hand, getting nerfed here uh, to require five more soul shards to summon. And fix an issue where Rain of Fire could damage enemies through walls. Warrior, Shield Slam damage increased by 8%. This is primarily a buff to Prot. But it's also buffed to Arms or Fury if you have a shield on, which you shouldn't. But if you do, that's a buff. Colossus, uh, Tide of Battle increases damage of Revenge by 10% per stack, was 5. Practice Strikes increases damage done by Mortal Strike by 15%, was 20. Mountain of Muscle and Scars increases all damage done by 4%, was 5. Okay, uh, so buff to Tide of Battle, nerfs to these two. And then just for protection, they're buffing Dominance of the Colossus to 20%, was 10. Mountain Thane, Thunder Blast damage down, Lightning Strike damage up, Ground Current damage down. Slayer, Slayer Strike damage buffed by 100%. March for Execution increases Execute damage by 15% per stack was 10. Show No Mercy increases Execute Crit Chance and damage by 15 was 10. Overwhelming Blades Overwhelm now stacks up to 12 times was 10. Fierce Follow Through increases the damage of next Mortal Strike and Bloodthirst by 20% was 10. Opportunist increases the Crit Chance and damage of Overpower and Raging Blow by 30 was 10 and 15 respectively. Slayer's Malice now increases damage dealt by Overpower and Raging Blow by 30 was 20. Now, I already thought Slayer Fury was like the sickest, one of the highest damage ones out there. Um, so a lot of buffs here to a hero talent tree that I, at least one of the combos I already thought was really good. Um, I don't know so much about Slayer Arms, but I'd seen a lot of Slayer Fury hype. Maybe there were nerfs to it in previous builds that I missed. Arms, uh, Mortal Strike damage down, Overpower damage down. Okay, so Arms nerfs. Prot, Melee Attack and All Ability damage increased by 30%. That is the largest number we've seen of any of these tanks. Revenge damage increased by 25%. Execute damage increased by 50%. Devastator damage, 25%. Shield charge primary target damage, 25%. And Ravager, 25% as well. So wow, big damage increases to Prot Warrior. Um, I already liked how Prot Warrior was feeling, but this is going to help it be doing some competitive damage as well. Obviously, all the other tanks got buffed in their damage as well, but not by this much. So this is a relative buff to Prot, even though it's an absolute buff to all tanks. Items, upgrade system. Hero track loot from Mythic Plus now drops at a maximum of 1 out of 6. Uh, Myth track has been extended to 6 steps, was 4. Increase the item level profession crafted items to accommodate the increase in max item level of the Myth track. Now items crafted with an enchanted Gilded Harbinger crest range from item levels 6 to 20, uh, 623 to 636 was 619 to 629. So yeah, these are the loot changes uh, discussed at the start of this video and in previous videos. Uh, again, these have already kind of been talked about yeah, quite a bit. Um, I guess I'm, I think I'm in favor of them now with, with the, the crafted, this note was really important. This is really important, but I think now I'm in favor of it because, um, I think, I, again, I'm in favor of it. I think it'd be really good if they added some alt or joining a patch late catch up systems so that you're not looking at like a hundred keys, uh, to gear out a, a new character a few months into the patch when there's maybe only a month or two left. And that's just like, eh, I'm not going to do this. Raid rewards, the finer things. Starting a month after season one begins, Nerebar, uh, players may, may collect Nerebar finery within Nerebar Palace to smuggle out to their allies in exchange for additional power within the raid. These rewards are warbound wide. Okay, this is a big, this is big here. Starting a month after season one begins. So that is how, that is when we will be able to start accumulating that buff. This quest and its power rewards are intended to help players overcome difficult raid challenges over time. Even as power from gear acquisition slows naturally, players can expect a small amount of additional damage and healing every up to every two weeks if they collect all available Nerebar finery, eight per week, so that's one per boss per week, up to a maximum of 18% after completing the quest eight times. Now, 18 divided by eight is not a nice round number. 16 divided by eight would be... That, then that would be 2% per week. 18% is, maybe you get a freebie. Maybe the first time you do the quest, you know, there's like, here's some for free, something like that. I don't know. Players who enter the, late, the raid late or fall behind will find they're able to rapidly catch up within several weeks with even faster initial catch up ensuring they're not too far behind their fellow raiders. Phenomenal. Warband wide, great. Starting a month after season one begins, sounds like a well-calibrated time here. Um, increasing 
yeah. Damage and healing done. Now, the one thing I'll say is that increasing damage and healing done, it may be correct to also increase our health bars. Particularly, yeah, like the... I mean, the healing done is definitely nice for survivability, but um, I think increasing damage, health, and healing done would maybe maybe be the best way to set this up. I don't know. Maybe healers would have... I think healers would have more fun in that world as well, because then it would be possible to... You know, the, the really good groups could underheal more uh, with a bigger sponge, and then the less good groups would be a little bit less susceptible to people getting one shot, uh, which this notably doesn't help with. Mythic mounts per kill increased to three was two. Nice. Queen Anstrek and the Silicon Court will drop additional upgrade crests from the next higher difficulty in addition to their existing crests. For example, Heroic Queen Anstrek will drop 15 runed and 15 gilded. Wow, this is a great change. Uh, I had previously suggested just a full swap for the last two or three bosses of a, uh, a tier. So I, I suggested this of like making Heroic Queen Anstrek just drop the gildeds, which are the new aspects, uh, instead of the runes, which are the, the new worms. Uh, but it looks like they're going to do this even more generously than that, and they're, it's just going to drop. It's going to drop you both. Um, so doing those last couple of bosses on heroic will be big. Doing the last two bosses on normal is going to be big as well, because I mean, if you think about it, doing those last two bosses on normal, if you still need the Drake's Crest, which you won't after the first few weeks in most cases, but uh, you'll be getting them in addition to getting the the Worms Crests, the Ruined Crests. Um, so yeah, this is. I think this is a really good. I mean, obviously, I've proposed this change before so obviously i think it's a really good change but i think this is going to be really great for uh, it's also it's just weird like it was weird how much harder it was to get aspects crests out of raid than from m plus um obviously you know you had to do hard m plus to get those aspects crests but compared to how much harder it was in raid i think that the last few bosses on heroic is an appropriate level of difficulty to be comparable to the places you have to go in m plus uh to get those crests so i think this is a uh, really nice buff there to in particular, this buff is, is going to be nice for like AOTC guilds where there are players who do some M plus maybe, but they, maybe they don't do a full cap worth of M plus each week, and they just really struggled to get all the aspects crests they needed. Now, if you're actually able to kill those last couple of bosses, they're going to start getting uh, a sizable income of those just from raid. I think that's going to be yeah again really really good. Uh, great great note here. Now we got some PvP changes. We don't do those here. We don't read those PvP changes here. Not very many of them this week. There were a lot in some previous weeks. So. Uh, anyways, those are the patch notes for this week. Wow, they uh, they buried some really exciting stuff there at the bottom of the at the bottom of the notes. So, uh, those of you that have watched through the whole video, you got a little reward there. All those idiots who started clicking off after I started reading, oh, this ability goes up by twenty percent. You know, those people probably would be feeling pretty stupid right now. But I guess by definition, they're not still watching, so they're probably not feeling much of anything, huh? Hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.